Hi, I'm Steve Rude. I'm a comic book artist and illustrator. Today we're going to be talking about an art form that has kind of been lost in the centuries. The art of pen and ink, made popular by people like uh, James Montgomery Flagg, Charles Dana Gibson, and Orson Roll. Let's start. The um, tools that I've been using are this the regular Bombay ink. Sometimes I use this ink right here, the Speedball Super Black ink for the brush ink. But I normally use this ink for the pen ink right here. This is a Gelat 170 right here. But you can use any good ink, any good pen nib, nib that you want. This is just a nice pointed brush right here. This is number 10. And this is a special effects brush that I use, big flat, a half inch right here for uh, some of the special effects on this clothing right here. And I'll have whiteout that I use right here. This is a Japan whiteout cult right there. On this drawing here, you can see I've done it a fairly loose uh, drawing. It's not really tight. I don't really like to go into really tight drawings. I like to keep it kind of loose just for the freedom of um, going in with the pen strokes here. I think I'm going to start with a hand. There's no particular reason for that, just because I feel like it. Um, this is from a Rockwell drawing right here. You can see there's a good sense of light and shadow going on here. Uh, Rockwell was a master at everything to do with art. And that's why I picked his uh, painting here from a, a Yankee Doodle kind of a, uh, an affair that he did back in, I think, um, the 20s or the 30s. So there's my outline thing um, that I'm starting with. And my pen lines are going to represent the tones of the oil painting that he did. I'm using um, pen strokes. He used oil paint. But the main thing is you want to describe form. And that's what all art is about, is describing form. You know, basically, they're, they're, they're just cylinders, these forms here. And then I modify them by putting in the little things within the bigger forms. But everything you do in art is, involves drawing. In other words, things that go back to the sphere and, and the cube and all that other kind of stuff we all know all about. One of the things that really surprises me is working with these, these pen nibs here is that I thought they would be uh, many times superior working with these hundred year old nibs compared to the ones that they make today. And there's honestly, I didn't find a vast amount of difference. Sometimes the nibs I work with last a um, um, couple weeks, sometimes they last minutes before I have to trash them. And now we're gonna move up to the, the head area here. This style became prominent in, in, this, um, in the 1900s up to the 1930s because it was the easiest way to reproduce stuff in a newspaper and the cheap newsprint that they used back then. So that was the style that was called upon. And if you could use it, then you got hired to do artwork. Bravo, you can make a living. Here's a little half tone area right here. Half tones are nothing more than something that's in the light, not in the shadow. This is a, nothing more than a darker area that occurs in the light area. Because not areas, all areas are the same. So depending on how hard I stroke the pen nib here, we're going to get either darker or lighter. When you look at what I'm doing here, and when I look at other artists that have done this, the great masters of the past, some people look at it and say, well, what's the big deal? Why should this be so hard? Well, try it, and then you'll know. Uh, Rockwell worked from a model here. That's why he looks a little bit on the stiff side. His expression does. So I'm going to caricature him a little bit, you know, get his smile a little, a little more pronounced. Not as easy as it looks, but that's part of why I like to do it, because it is a challenge. This is something that you learn the hard way through mistakes. Mistakes happen because you're human. The last time I checked, I was of that species. You don't set out to make mistakes, you, you, they just happen because that's part of the process. Okay, so the rest of this 
it's going to be done with a brush because it's it's a lot of, there's a lot of bold black screen on here. That's all I'm doing so far. We'll notice over here that um, I've got a piece of paper that I'm always testing my strokes out on. First of all, to make sure that uh, the, uh, the pen is working right. And I'm just dipping, dipping, dipping. Always measuring to make sure that things are going where they're supposed to be. And the little details of the fingers, I'll, I'll um, do that, um, I think, a little later on. Right now, I'm just going to get the basic outlines done and then go into things later on. Now I'm going to go in the brush. To do this all in a bunch of tiny pen strokes seems kind of silly to me, so I'm going to wisely avoid that and just go straight to a um, large brush. But I do want to um, pay attention to um, the folds and how they work. I learned to work with uh, looser drawings over the years. I think at some point I, I like to work with very tight stuff. But then after a while, uh, the more comfortable I got and the more practice I put in, I was able to do things with, with less of a tight underdrawing, which I don't like to do nowadays. And you can see I like the sawtooth of some of these drawing strokes here with a brush. Just because I think it adds uh, character to things. I'm just going to boldly brush them in there. Remember, there's a pattern to these things. They're not just random. They have a in and out kind of pattern that you have to observe. But you know that nothing is random. It's always a very studied, deliberate kind of a uh, form. And there's a little area up here that's uh, kind of like a, it's hardly a highlight, but it's a lighter area within the darks. And I'm not sure how I'm going to handle that yet, but I'll figure it out. A lot of people are really big on these small, tiny brushes that I'm always against. They just, uh, they shouldn't use brushes that small. I think that the way I'm going to do this is just this dry brush kind of thing. And I'll use that by displaying the bristles and just going like that. And that's how I would do it. The only reason they call it dry brush is because uh, it has less, less, the ink is less wet on it kind of dried off in a paper towel. And they, they just acquired the word dry brush, even though it's still obviously very wet. So you got to get used to these weird terms. Artists peg these things after a while. There's nothing dry about it. It's just less wet. And you can even use it up here for to get the feather kind of a soft, a softer kind of a thing. I think I'll twist it this way to get the brush behaving the way I want it. Yeah, this is a good place to use the dryer kind of a brush technique. Practice is to just all practice. And the denser you want it, you just go over it a few times. See? It can be learned, it can be done. This line, that's my little girl, Jessica, who's filming this video right now. I'm going to grab a really big flat brush. How about a bigger brush? Yeah, let's try this big three-quarter inch. Yeah, flat brush. We're going to get a little wet, and we're going to dip it in the ink right here. And I'm going to be very careful to do this to it to get the right kind of texture thing. This is um, some kind of a velour thing that's going on with this, this coat of his. And I think the best way to get this texture is to do something like that. And then I can tell I need to go into <clears throat> different areas right here and kind of give it a more specific kind of uh, look to it. So that's how I, I decided to solve that right there. Okay, so you get an idea of how I, I think about this stuff. See, I'm almost, I've almost run out of ink here, so 
I'm gonna just dispense with a uh, three quarter inch brush. Now I'm gonna go over this area right here. I'm not gonna try to go around things because I don't really like doing that. I'm gonna use white out later on to uh, get those, um, the rains. You gotta be very careful about when you uh, apply the strokes right here because um, if anyone, anyone who's ever tried using pen and ink before knows that when you're converting tone to lines, it's easy to make lines into a mishmash of lines here, there, and everywhere. And you don't want that. And that's where most of the practice comes in, is uh, trying to organize your lines so they don't look like they're, they're going everywhere. And, and because believe me, if you don't have some kind of a coherent sense of pattern going on, it's gonna look very strange. Anyone who thinks you, you don't have to know anatomy, um, everything that you're trying to depict here, uh, you're in for a shock. And I'm gonna add a few things on my own here that I think are, are needed. I'm getting some resistance from my pen in here. I think even though I've cleaned it up good, um, it's starting to gum up a little bit. And that's usually the time when I end up throwing these things away. They've kind of outlived themselves. You know, I dip them and clean them and I do all the things that everyone else does, but um, a lot of times they just, they refuse to work at a certain point. So I just get rid of them. The same kind of buildup happens on them. And no matter how, how often you clean them, mm -hmm. they just, uh, they go through their lifespan and then they're over. Let's see, there's another one more here. I'm not sure what this one is, but let's try it. Seems to look fine, so. I wanted to add a few wisps to this hair right here to make it um, <clears throat> look more like hair. So I'm just gonna pay a little more attention to this, this feather right here. You know, kind of zero in on, on its and exactly what it's, it's got going on here. If you think you can slop off in stuff, um, that's when you're gonna find yourself getting in trouble. Everything is, is very deliberate. Okay, so we, uh, we are pretty much done with this right here. So the whiteout is coming up right about now. We're gonna open it up. This is the leader number two. There's a number one. I don't think there's a whole lot of difference going on there. Again, I don't. I never use a really skinny. This is number eight right here. As long as it comes to a good point, who cares? Some of this is going to be of the kind of a dry, drier brush variety. And here comes that all important range of the horse. See, that's what I prefer right there. Much more than uh, having to go around stuff. So you're going to have to go over it a couple times to make sure it is opaque. And I've never found one that is uh, completely opaque. So uh, rocks are rock with that. You can't get loose without a lot of practice, in my mind. Everything that you have in life that looks effortless comes with a lot, a lot of practice. So practice, guys, because you can never get enough and you have a whole lifetime to learn it. Okay, so guys, um, um, I think I've put all the right touches on here that I need to. This is uh, my example of how I do pen and ink. All we have to do now is sign it. There's my demo for you right there, guys. Don't be afraid to put a couple of lines back in there if you want. This is um, a pip artist pen right here by Faber-Castell. Everyone uses these in the business. It's permanent ink, so I don't see why you, you um, should be afraid to use it. And there we have our demo. Thanks to you for joining in and uh, hopefully you'll you find this entertaining. So thanks, I'll see you next time for another demo. Bye-bye.